going on, everybody? It's your boy Joey the Greek, um, JTGFX. This is the last installment of the series, the Foundation series. This is the last installment. And then we're going to move on to price action um, theories is what the series is going to be called. And that's where we really dive in on learning how to trade. But I believe this is going to be the most important of of this current series of, of the foundation of building your basic knowledge on trading. So this is the last installment and, and I deem the most most important. So what we see here is, um, uh, what we're gonna talk about, I'm sorry, is, is uh, market times and characteristics of these three uh, markets. So we're gonna talk about um, London, New York, and we're gonna talk Asia. All right, so what we're gonna go over is market hours, uh, hours to monitor, and key characteristics of each. Time is based off Eastern Time, New York. So when I say when I say 7 a.m., it's Eastern Time. So you just want to calibrate it, uh, whatever time zone you're in. You want to calibrate it for for everything based off New York, because that's where I live. I mean, I don't live in New York, but I live in Massachusetts. But same time zone. So first thing we're going to talk about is uh, London. All right. Hours to monitor for all Euro and British pound pairs um, during London is between 2.30 a.m. and 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time. London usually sees the most movement and has the highest volume compared to New York and Asia. So characteristics of London. Frequent setups. Economic news. High of the day or low of the day usually occurs in London. The London market closes at 12 p.m. So you want to be monitoring if you basically consider the London session from 2.30 a.m. is when you want to start monitoring. And then it ends at 12 p.m. Between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. is usually the close of the London session. And you could usually uh, anticipate uh, an opposite direction of whatever the strong direction was during that time. Um, so let's go over this a little bit more. So what I mean by by frequent setups, um, you could you could stumble across. Uh, I don't want to go too de too deep because I want to talk about this in the price action theories. But you could um, have a strong directional move um, away. Let's say you're on a support level. Uh, you know, two thirty a.m. hits. You could have a strong directional move. Uh, from a specific key level, uh, a pullback, um, you know, it could be, you know, during during London, it could be uh, a, a swing point failure, uh, you know, so for, we'll, we'll talk about that more in the price and action theories. I don't really want to go over that here. Um, you'll see economic news releases as well. Uh, as in New York, you will see that as well. So what's most important here, I want you guys to you know write this down or keep a note of is that the high of the day or uh, low of the day usually occurs in London. Right. So now New York, hours to monitor is between 7.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Um, you wanna be, when you're, when you're trading New York, you wanna, I mean, and it may not just, it may not happen at 7.30, just same with London, it may not, the, the setup may not occur at 7.30 a.m. You know, the, 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 the big move in, in, in price may happen, you know, 8.45, 9 a.m. These are the times you want to just be on the computer and alert um, and wait for your setup to occur. New York closes at 2 p.m. So from 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, it's a good time to, just, you know, be by your computer um, and just monitor how price moves. Um, but uh, typically volume does does die down after 12 so keep keep that in mind after 12 p.m. so characteristics of New York uh, frequent setups um, the way I like to trade occurs during the New York session so in terms of either entering on a pullback so let's say you know uh, London has a strong directional move uh, and you want to go long let's say it's a long you wait for the retracement get on get on hop on a uh, you know good retracement level um, we'll talk about that and and jump in um, or a complete reversal uh, we'll talk about that as well uh, in the price action theory uh, series so you definitely want to tune into that 
I guess we'll talk about uh, pullbacks and reversals. We'll talk about all that. And also we have economic news releases during New York. Uh, the, the NFP that I spoke about, non-farm uh, payroll, which happens on the first Friday of each month, that does drop during New York. All right, Asia. Times to monitor is 6.30 p.m. to 2 a.m. Um, the volume is very low on this uh, this range, so keep that in mind. Uh, usually you see a directional push after 10 p.m. So characteristics of Asia, price usually ranges in Asia, building sentiment as breakout traders place orders below and above the range. All right, um, slow price action. This is great if you're a newbie because you know you may hop into a trade, uh, especially if you're trading um, Forex futures. The, you can definitely either be in, in, in green or uh, in drawdown real fast um, based off the tick values is different than a pip one in uh, Forex. But so this is great if you're a newbie because price moves slow. And if you feel like, you know, let's say you're down, uh, let's say you run in uh, one contract and you're down, you know, 50, 60 bucks uh, and you know that you're, it's going to continuously go down or you're on the wrong wrong side of the market, you could get out at a small loss, especially if, you know, especially if you don't if you don't use a stop loss, which I highly don't re I highly recommend you use a stop loss. It will we'll go over stop loss placement as well in the next series. But um, when I first started as a trader, I didn't use stop losses, so I know um, that you don't want to follow that advice. You definitely want to use a stop loss, not a hard, not a mental stop loss, which a lot of people do. They say if it hits this level, then I'll pull out. Because uh, you know, there's many times where your stop loss will get hit and then it'll completely go in the direction that you thought it was going to go. But uh, back to what I was saying. So the slow price action is great if you're a newbie because it moves slow. And there are pairs that also, uh, you know, don't move a lot. So that's a, we'll also go over that too. Um, but I believe it's great for a newbie because if I'm in the wrong direction, I don't have to wait for my stop loss to get hit. I can just pull myself out at a minimal loss. Uh, you want to scalp. Uh, Asia on a five minute time frame and uh, I'm gonna make videos on this on how to properly um, scalp Asia uh, what my best set what I look for when I trade Asia so I'm definitely gonna go over that as well okay guys so this finishes the series uh, we're gonna move on to the next series if you guys have any questions you could always um, shoot me a message uh, on my Twitter which is at Joey the Greek one uh, you can Instagram me at either at Joey the Greek or at JTG underscore FX. Uh, either way, hit me up. Uh, any questions, I'm more than happy to help. And uh, we'll see you.